Tuesday, January 2nd, 2020, work session of the Marquette City Commission. The Commission is meeting to discuss the Lakeshore Boulevard near Marquette. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to continue to shore up that section between Fair Avenue and um, Wright Street. Secondly, I would hope that as you're considering what to do for the remainder, for the other portion that goes to Holly Street, that you'll give as much attention to that portion between East Fair Avenue and Wright Street um, for a number of reasons. I outlined some of those before. I don't need to go into that. Um, and when you look at grants, I hope that you'll look also at what the cost is for the overhead for some of those agencies that are going to be getting these grants. But I, I applaud the direction that you're taking. Uh, last time I said, I think um, knowledge is power. Certainly people understanding what's happening is important. And there's been good coverage in, on both TV and in the binding room. So that's one way to get people's attention. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Thank you. Seeing none, public comment is now closed. So we've got one agenda item this evening, discussion of Lakeshore Boulevard. Just prior to this meeting, the commission and city staff and some um, partners took a bus tour and we went and looked at the Lakeshore all the way from kind of South Beach up towards where some of the erosion is happening on Lakeshore Boulevard. So we did have a chance to kind of see firsthand what's going on. Most of us have already seen it. Now, at this point, we've got a nice presentation by city staff, and then I'm going to hand it over to Dennis Stetwitz, Community <coughs> Services Department, and he will take through the presentation. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <coughs> Mayor, Honorable Commissioners, once again, we meet on this topic. Thank you for the opportunity. And Dennis, I just had one more note. I'm sorry about that. Uh, um, we will take one pause after um, Scott Convenzi's presentation for commissioners to comment and have questions, and then at the end, the commissioners will have another chance to do so. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the housekeeping notes. 
thank you community for being interested in this this evening tonight we're going to run through a presentation we're going to talk about historical planning some of the environmental challenges and infrastructure challenges uh, how we have tackled some funding and what the future looks like for our shoreline in the city of marquette the presenters tonight will be myself I'm the community development director i've been here at city of marquette i think this is year 18. Um, Scott Kimbenzi is will follow me. He is our public works director. Kurt Goodman is our municipal uh, municipal utilities director. Ian Davis, our fire chief, is here. We have Jerry Grant from Superior Watershed Partnership, who's been a great partner of the city. Um, John Swenson could not be here this evening, so we're going to drop him from the presentation. Um, and Mike Angeli, the city manager, will be here. And I don't know. Stick could be doing any speaking this evening. He was on the tour, but um, I'm going to talk about historical planning and community engagement. There are a number of plans that have addressed to the shoreline in the city of Marquette. And, and historically speaking, we often reference the final report recommendations of the Lakeshore Development Task Force from 1999. And sometimes that gets criticized a little bit because, wow, it was 1999. We, we haven't even like checked our computers before we got them off on Y2K. Um, but the reality is every, you know, I've been involved in planning exercises in this community for the better part of 18 years, and every time we talk <coughs> about the Lakeshore, everything in that final report and recommendation is reinforced. It was a very solid document. However, moving forward in our next strategic planning uh, budget session, we will be recommending that some funding be placed in there to um, reopen that report and evaluate it again. We have planned for the shoreline not only in terms of infrastructure and the community wanting to have a nice scenic drive along it. We have also adopted several climate variability plans, uh, climate change, whatever you want to call it, climate adaptation. I believe it is mentioned in our master plan several times. And we also have four different adopted climate plans um, where Marquette is referenced. These are kind of like the important ones that I'm going to hit on as we go through the presentation very quickly. I mentioned the Lakeshore Boulevard Task Force report recommendation. We also went through two planning processes with Coastal Zone Management Grant Phase 1 and Phase 2 workshops. These were circa 2013-2014. Um, I had mentioned some of these climate plans, Lake Superior Climate Adaptation Mitigation and Adaptation Plan. That was done with uh, SWP and partners. We have the Marquette County Climate Health Adaptation Guidebook where they actually put some design in there for the city of Marquette. Um, we had our own study through LISA, Adapting to Climate Change Variability. We've had the county community. Marquette County Community Resiliency Workshop, and we also have our community master plan where it's all wrapped up. And all of these things kind of culminate to, to give us some specific recommendations, even though they look in a general sense. And this, is, this was a really good example. This was from the uh, Marquette County Community Resilience Workshop, and we kind of call them the Climate Task Force. Our staff participates in that. And, you know, one of the options for increased resiliency for us was to was to move Lakeshore Boulevard. So that's a, a win-win in, in uh, helping us with implementing our plans. The Coastal Zone Management Grant Phase One and Two. We were project partners uh, with Superior Watershed Partnership. And this was kind of unique in that the time that we had applied for this uh, grant, one of one of our cell, well, a big part of our cell to the state of Michigan. <coughs> was that we wanted to be the first community in Michigan to kind of set the example on how communities can protect their infrastructure and also blend in natural shoreline attributes because Marquette really cares about its shoreline. So how do we do that with hard infrastructure and also blending in natural features? So that, that sold it to them. The project spanned two years. I know that some folks here were at the community forums. I think we had the better part of four or five community forums on that. We had written comments, and we also did a 
community survey on that. And after the two years, the uh, for, you know the outcome was to have this shovel ready plan per se for moving the road. So phase one, we had uh, we had Baird, which was a coastal engineering firm. They helped us analyze the erosion and draft some alternatives based upon our community master plan and then some investigation through natural science that they did out there. And then they presented five alternatives to the community. This was the existing conditions. Then we had, this is the do nothing option. And you'll see two lines on there. The yellow line was uh, one to two years after the rocks were removed. And then the red line was going to be the 100 years after the rocks failed on there. So you see we would be encroaching into the Dow side at this time. So they had the time lapse on it. This was alternative two. Alternative three had some beaches, some groins out in the lake, uh, offshore reefs. And <coughs> this was option four, which was off breakwaters out in the lake themselves. And then this was alternative five, which were kind of uh, break walls that were perpendicular to the shoreline. Um, ultimately, the community had chose kind of like a, a modified option. But anyhow, we, we did the public engagement, looked at those designs. Uh, the community picked one. We did surveys to public meetings. And this was what came out of it. This was. Um, a rock revetment on the shoreline uh, at where it immediately meets the lake. The shoreline restoration included some dunes and swales and natural areas, multi-use pathway, and, and moving the lake. That was approved by the City Commission, I believe, in early 2015. And this was just a side design of it. I'm sure a lot of people are probably familiar with this because we've had it. Uh, in and out, uh, presented on the website and to a bunch of different forums. But this is what a side shot of it would look like. You have the relocated road, a lot of natural features, and then the stone stone armor that would be done um, after engineering to meet the demands of the lake in the worst case scenario. These were the cost estimates for it. It's approximately $12 million. We found that that's gone up just a little bit when we move forward. And the outcome was the City Commission adopted the plans, the State of Michigan approved it, and then as staff, we looked for funding opportunities. And we'll get to those a little bit later in the presentation. For now, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Convenzi, who's going to talk about some of the more recent challenges we have. Good evening. Um, for this part of the presentation, we're going to break the section of shoreline into three distinct areas. And the first part is from right to Holly, and the second part is from Fair to Pine Street. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the issues we've had in other areas of the shoreline. Uh, up until this point, most of the discussion has been about the section from Right Street to Holly. Uh, as Dennis mentioned, we now have plans in place moving forward with moving the road and redeveloping that shoreline. Um, we do have some funding in place for that, and we are actively uh, pursuing some additional funding for that. Um, where I really come in is, you know, what has the maintenance been along that stretch of road over the last? probably 10 plus years. Um, for quite some time now, you've noticed that the road in that stretch has been closed over the winter. Uh, eventually, from the, the fall and winter storms, breaking over what's left of the rocks out there, everything kind of freezes into a point where <coughs> it's just not maintainable over the course of the winter at that point in time. Uh, mm -hmm we've made a decision to shut down that section of road over the winter time. Uh, but a lot of the other maintenance that's, that's happened along that stretch, uh, we've 
we've tried restacking the rocks the best we can. Um, but if you remember back far enough, uh, driving along that stretch or biking or running, uh, you couldn't even see the lake. Uh, you were basically looking at a stack of rocks and rubble that was across the road. Um, little by little, uh, that's kind of disappeared. Um, now I think you could probably drive in about the lowest profile automobile you can find and you can see the lake for most of that stretch without too much trouble. Um, all that rock is gone and that, that was really what was kind of saving the road. Um, up until this point, you know, we were able to do shoulder maintenance and things like that and still keep the road drivable for the majority of the year. Um, this last storm this fall, uh, it was pretty much a catastrophic failure of that road if you haven't been out there to see it. Um, there is no <laughs> real coming back from the damage that's been done to that road other than you know, redoing the road. So it, it has failed completely at this point for probably at least a third to half of that stretch. Um, we have attempted to keep the bike path open for a portion of the winter. Again, the main issue you run into with even trying to keep the, the bike path open, once the snow and ice is built up and you get the storms, then it traps all the water and just creates ice in a difficult and probably dangerous situation for the, the public behind it. And that's, that's why we've come to this point now where it is closed down for the winter time. Uh, more recently now, looking at the section from Fair to Pine Street, uh, this is an area that, you know, probably over the last 10 years, give or take, has really seen change. And then even more recently now in the last year, you've seen dramatic change. Um, there was a point in time where this section of road probably had 20 to 50 feet of forest of dune and probably another 100 plus feet of beach uh, lakeside of Lakeshore Boulevard. Um, as the water levels have risen, uh, the erosion has, has gotten worse along that stretch. And um, we'll get into some pictures a little bit later, but uh, there's, there's areas where the uh, edge of the water is less than 20 feet now from the road. With that stretch, we have uh, you know, looked at future planning efforts. Um, there is a CZM grant application that we have out there right now uh, that would allow for planning efforts along that stretch and additionally uh, would allow some uh, work to be done along that stretch, more so at the north end. Um, if you're not aware, uh, that triangle that's north of Lakeview Arena is owned by Northern Michigan University. And actually the beach between the house off and the fair all the way up to the end of the triangle is also owned by Northern Michigan University. Um, the majority of that beach is now gone and the edge of the water uh, for a good part of that stretch is, is right up to the, the city-owned railway. Um, but moving forward, uh, with Northern being the large adjacent property owner, that's something we'll, we'll look forward to working with them on the future of uh, what that area is going to look like. <coughs> Interim maintenance in that area, you know, there, five, six years ago, yeah, we had bad storms, we'd have to go out there with the front end loader and clean up some of the sand and open things back up. Um, with some of the pictures I'll show you here in a minute, uh, we're well past that. Like I said, the, the edge of the water is you know, roughly 20 feet away from the edge of the road in some areas. Other shoreline areas, uh, we've, we've had a storm a couple of years ago where the damage was done at Shires Park there. Uh, we were able to restore a lot of that area 
in house to at least get it usable and, and functioning for the public to go back and use. Uh, I'd say the, the parking lot was probably reduced by well, 30 percent in size, maybe a little bit more, um, but it's it's still functional at this point in time. Uh, US 41 South. Uh, that shoreline is actually state-owned for the most part, so we've been working with uh, state agencies such as the DNR uh, to restore some of the washouts that are happening along the, the high banks, uh, along the bike path uh, as you head out along 41 South. Um, Presque Isle Park, there's, you know, a lot of erosion that still continues to go on there. Um, good news is the area that was armored several years ago now is, is still functioning pretty well. Um, and we haven't had a lot of maintenance, <coughs> excuse me, associated with that, that area. But there are definitely areas that are starting to erode. Uh, we've had areas where um, <coughs> For safety reasons, we had a, a gate put on the breakwater, and that that's uh, kind of in rough shape now. Um, north break wall, the beaches, obviously the lot of areas where the beaches just don't exist anymore. It's, it's eroded past that point. Uh, top photos are from October 2017. Uh, you can see mainly just areas where we had to clean up dirt. Uh, there's still some flooding in the area that you can see present there. Um, that was one of the first major storms uh, that we had a lot of damage, but again, the road was still in decent shape. Uh, fast forward to January 2019, and those are photos more from the winter. Uh, again, that's that's what the storms are, are doing. They're, they're pushing the rock right back up and over the road. Uh, they're eating away at the edge of the road. And it was still maintainable. We were still able to go back in the springtime, open the roads back up, clean it up, and, and put them back in use. That's what it looks like after the most recent storms. There is no road left uh, for a large stretch of that. Um, a lot of debris again, but you can see a little bit of the, re the remaining revetment out there, but for the most part, the water's edge is right up to the edge of the road. These are some pictures down uh, the stretch back behind Lake the Arena. You can see quite a bit of beach there, although less than there was you know, 10 years ago, but still a fair amount of beach left. That's actually the old fall we had Lake the Arena, and you can see where it's all sanded in. That was the typical maintenance we had to do. We were mainly worried with just keeping that open so we didn't have flooding. Uh, that was fairly simple to go in there and do. Um, the more recent damage, as we'll see here shortly, uh, goes well beyond that. Uh, here are some pictures from around 2011 of that shoreline. This is a section between Fair Ave and Pine. Uh, you can see in the, so the top one on the right there where that outfall is. And there's you know, quite clearly a, a channel coming out to the lake. Uh, you can see where you know, it appears that the lake levels are, are a lot less. And you can see the, the forested area along the edge of the road and probably 100 plus feet of beach. <laughs> um, that's what it looked like uh, just this past fall, and you can see where the water line has got to be real close to the edge of the road. Um, and on the right, there's a person out there inspecting the the damage. You can you can see it, it essentially eroded up to vertical sandbanks. Um, that, that picture is probably less than 20 feet from the road. We 
move forward with trying to uh, armor the shoreline. Uh, we had another storm partway through that process, and you can see we're eroded behind the wing walls here on the outlet behind Lakeview Arena. Um, that's an important piece of infrastructure to, to make sure that we're maintaining and, and that we don't lose. Uh, for now, that, that is the main outlet for a lot of storm water on the, the north part of town there. This is part way through the process of armoring the shoreline. Uh, first picture is probably the first couple hundred feet uh, where we started down towards the end of the fair. And the next picture shows you just a, a temporary breakwater that they, they built out there so that they could um, work without more erosion taking place. So that essentially they were kind of moving along the, the shoreline at the edge of the lake and placing rocks along the actual shore uh, as they move from south to north. A couple pictures of additional areas. Uh, the one on the left is right down by the Hampton Inn. Uh, that's an area that usually doesn't see too much erosion, but again, with the higher lake levels, that uh, was enough to start eroding. That's, that's right by the bike path. And the next picture is about, I don't know, probably 90%, 80-90% of the, the way down South Lake Street towards the Carp River Bridge. <coughs> and that actually isn't one of the bigger areas. Uh, as, as you move south of the Carp River Bridge, there are several areas that were a lot worse than this one. That's going back, that's just some Shire's Park damage. That's what it looked like <coughs> before. Yeah, we cleaned it up. Uh, that's just a picture of, of the uh, high seas. That's right off the end of Wright Street. You can see that what's left of that rock revetment is no match for some of the storms we're getting. Uh, just take a little bit of a look at cost of what we put into the area. Uh, we did an overlay project in 2010, and that was the section between the, the end of Wright Street to Holly. Uh, we've done some coastal restoration. Uh, one of the big storms was in May of 2015. Another was October of 2017. Uh, we did a restoration at the mouth of the Carp River that added some shoring to protect their infrastructure where <coughs> two large uh, sanitary mains crossed the river to make sure that the foundations for those weren't eroding into the river. Uh, this lakeshore armoring we've done this year. Uh, you know, so you can see that it's starting to add up the amount of money that we're putting in there. And those are just larger projects. That's above and beyond the annual maintenance that we're putting in there to some of the different infrastructure. So all total over the last 10 years, we've sunk nearly a million dollars into various little projects and annual maintenance. Thank you, Scott. So at this time, I'm going to go through um, the level of questions. If you have any questions or comments at this point, um, I'll go through and let everyone have a chance to talk about them. And if you have additional questions, I ask that you save them at the end. Mayor Pro Tem Hill, if you want to start us off, please. Thank you. Thank you for the presentations and giving us an overview. If you haven't been out there yet, I've walked that area uh, many times, and it is uh, quite um, breathtaking how much has changed in just the, since October 16th. Uh, I have, have some fundamental questions that I hope are answered later today or in the future about how we are making these decisions. And I invite, that's one comment and question I have. Those fundamental questions involve, um, I hear a lot about armoring the shore. 
But if we don't understand what the water is doing, what are we armoring against? And, and I understand that we may or may not have that capacity within the city. I understand that that may or may not cost a lot of money. I understand that the Army Corps has agreed that they caused some of the damage. Um, and, it, and it's been a struggle to get them to work with us. All of, given all of that, it still remains to me absolutely paramount that we have to understand what we're armoring against before we start. I'm going to feel comfortable making investments going forward to address a very uncertain situation. Um, I also, uh, so I'm hoping that we hear more about that as much as we possibly can. And then what would it take to not just armor the shoreline, but think creatively about addressing, um, are there things we could be doing offshore or somewhere, uh, some other way of addressing these um, erosion issues, which in the end, again, erosion is just water going where we don't want it to go. Um, and then my other question, and this is a really big one, is um, I invite my fellow city commissioners, maybe later tonight or at another time, to discuss the value of a road along a shoreline when we don't know where that shoreline is going to be. Um, or put it more plainly, we are putting money into a road and it may be that in five years there won't even be a shoreline where that is now. Um, or will it go somewhere, or, you know, and as we've seen, it can also rapidly move in the other direction. Um, and I've heard that in the past, folks have said, we want a road, we want a road, we want a road. At what cost do we start to say that that road is not worth it anymore and we have other ways to get out to the island? There are very few property owners. There are no businesses being impacted. There is Lakeview Arena. But what are we going to be doing about that? And I invite us as a work session, maybe not tonight, but at another time to have that very important conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Push your I don't have much right now. I, I'm, we're, we're kind of referring to a map here. I don't know how you see this, but it, um, pretty much every area is historically addressed except for between Fair Street and Pine Street and Picnic Rocks. So we actually lack a long-term plan between Fair Street and Pine Street. Um, I am a great proponent of what we're doing on what I call the $12 million one mile road. I think that um, the elevated road, the sand dunes, native peach grass, I think it's a very good plan. It's expensive. We're going to have to find some ways to be able to afford that. I do believe this road is very important to the community, and I think moving it back is, is prudent. It's, it's a good idea. What I struggle with, along with what Mayor Proconville is saying, we have a road from Pine Street to Fair Street that is on the edge of the water right now. And I mean, we have been fortified with short-term solutions, and I appreciate that we need to protect the structure. We're kind of working on a plan, um, you know, from our master plan from previous commissions, but I think the conversation has significantly changed in the past year. Um, we are seeing unpre unprecedented damage to our shoreline. So I would accept that challenge from Mayor Pro Tem Hill about whether or not we need that road there. Um, I know this is, I mean, regarding the entire road access to Presque Isle, I know that can be uh, very emotional and, and people are very attached to it. I really love what we did with Clark Lambrose Park. I like the $12 million one mile road, but we have this section that we also need to address with some continuity. Um, that that fits Marquette, that fits this part of the shoreline. So I really hope that we concentrate on that. Um, I don't. I'm not a city planner. I don't know how those processes work. I envision a road that tucks in by Lakeview Arena, 
um, but there is wetlands there, and Northern Michigan University owns most of that land, so I, I think it would be essential to bring them to the table as well, um, see what infrastructure we're protecting if we need to do it um, going into the next 30 to 50 years. So. Uh, but thank you for the presentation. It's been very valuable. Uh, just to study everything that's happening, and I, I'm most interested in that part of this. Um, first, I just want to note that uh, we are looking at several potentially expensive solutions to preserving our lakeshore, as my colleagues noted. Um, most of that cost is actually in the process of protecting and rebuilding our shoreline, um, not in the road itself. So I do think that's something that's important to, to mention, is that you know, you're talking about a $12 million one-mile road, it's actually more like a 2 to $3 million one-mile road, and the rest is going towards uh, protecting and rebuilding the lake shore along that stretch, uh, which is going to need to be done one way or another. So um, I think that's important to recognize. I did have a couple of questions, um, and, and perhaps uh, Scott or Dennis, you can answer these, um, or, or maybe Mr. Angeli. But um, how much have we already spent in matching funds for grants related to the Lakeshore Boulevard relocation project, and how much uh, in additional matching <coughs> funds will be needed to complete the entire project, both phase one and phase two? Do we have an estimate of that? I can take a shot at that. Um, for the current $2.5 million uh, Fish and Wildlife Grant, we've matched $3 million, which we uh, budgeted uh, this year, 2019-2020, at the cost of, uh, or at the expense or trade-off of uh, $3 million worth of other capital improvement projects. The FEMA grant is $2.7 million, but the match is about 650000 We have not budgeted for that yet. So if we are successful with that grant, we'll probably need to come back for a budget adjustment to match that. The uh, Army Corps of Engineer grant is a 50% or 100% match. Uh, 100000 is no match right. for the first. And then if we do a project, it's 35%. Okay, 35% match. So if we get $10 million, we get that 35%. Um, that's the maximum of the, of the grant that we've applied for. Uh, we may very well uh, get less if we get any at all. So thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, that's very helpful. I was curious. So this one mile stretch of Lakeshore Boulevard that's going to be replaced and moved further inland. Uh, it costs about $2.8 million. There's also going to be a new multi-use path that will be about another $1 million that will go along the lakeshore in that area. And I'm curious um, how, when those, when the, that road and when that multi-use path will have to be replaced. Like, obviously there will be maintenance that will occur throughout their lifetime, but at what point will there need to be a total replacement? If you have to answer that the best that I can, and Jim, you can probably help me out with this, but on a typical road, brand new construction that we see on there, it, it depends on the quality of the materials. Of course, our guys are really good at inspecting and, and making sure that they do it properly, but once you put that road in, I mean, you wouldn't be not looking at a total reconstruct for many, many years after that. Um, I, we're probably looking at, what, 20 years, Jim? would be the life expectancy of that. And, and that's if we don't do anything to it. Now we have in our engineering department, as you know, in our capital improvements program, we do the PASER ratings. And there are certain roads where we will do heavy maintenance to or certain things to to extend the life of the road. So even the 20 year timeline is if we do nothing to it. But there's ways to make that even last much longer. I mean, do you have, I mean, I, I know it's very difficult to say, but do you have any estimate of if we were to put a reasonable amount of investment into extending the lifespan of that road, how long it might last in excess of 20 years? Try to answer that 
trying to think of a good example. Uh, minor maintenance would be sealing the cracks. Yep. Seal the cracks that extends the life of the road several years, maybe up to 10. Yeah. And the heavy maintenance is you grind off a little bit of the top of the pavement and you repave it. And if you do those two things, you're probably looking at 35 years. Yeah, 35 years or so. Great. And the bike, the bike paths work <coughs> along the same lines. Of course, they have much less weight put on them and, and so on and so forth than, than, uh, than a road would. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. And of course, we're moving that road. You know, that road is designed, if you if you remember one of the first slides that I had done on here, I had showed the, the predicted 100-year erosion mark. That road is outside of the 100-year erosion mark, so it's going to be outside of the, the boundaries of where, you know, even if all the proverbial heck broke loose on the shoreline and the revetment failed and everything else, the road's still going to be located outside of that area for 100 years. No, certainly it would be very secure. I appreciate that. Um, I, I think that the points that have been made by my colleagues about the uh, whether moving the road uh, makes fiscal sense you know, in the long term are, are well taken. That's sort of what I'm trying to get at here. Get, a, get some actual facts and, and uh, fiscal figures here so we can all start thinking about that as a commission. Um, but I definitely appreciate the information, and uh, I think this will be a really important discussion we have moving forward because there's a lot of money at stake. Commissioner Schlitten. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, for me, this is like beating a dead horse about 15 times. Uh, seeing this go through the planning commission stages and, and for over the years and, and continually we talked about as well as we have. I'm really happy to see this, but I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to seeing some work get done. And I, and I just want to bring up a couple of things. And, and what I want to point out is that this is a problem that you know we're looking at from 1999-ish, right around the 2000s. Um, we put sidewalks and boulders and all the extra junk that we could out in front of that, uh, uh, that road to try and keep Mother Nature from taking it back. And it was really poorly installed. Um, you know, you bring front end loader out there, you pile it up, and you hope it gets through the next uh, couple of years. Well, over time, of course, you know, it's time that we not kick this down the, the road any further, dare I say, and uh, and take care of this problem the, the proper way, which is what's happened. Um, the reason that Marquette sits where it sits right now in this process is because they've got multiple grant opportunities that weren't started on um, last year or before. These are things that have been going through since this, uh, the early 2000s, where they're saying, you know what, at some point in time, the Army Corps is going to pull their head out and they're going to say, yes, we are responsible for this, and we're going to help you all with it, or we're going to find grant funding somewhere um, through great entities like the Lake Superior Watership Partnership, who's done a ton of heavy lifting on this, on this project. Um, our staff who continually works and works and works over the years to to make sure that you know at some point in time when it gets to be the hot button that it is right now because of the water levels um, five years ago I'm not gonna again beat that other dead horse again but at our low levels we weren't gonna get any love from the state we weren't gonna get any federal attention we weren't gonna get any other attention for uh, this this road move that we've known for for 20 years because it wasn't zero hour, and we're there, okay? Um, we can't use the road, it's, it's been pretty much demolished with these last storms. Uh, fortunately, because of the things again that have been put in place, we are able to approach this uh, this next year, really run it, and, and that's, a, that's a humongous advantage to the city of Marquette, is that there's communities right now that are way deep, dare I say, Again, boy, I'm coming up with a really bunch of bad analogies and uh, play on words, but in over their heads right now in the water because they just haven't had um, uh, the time and the experience and, and the, you know, the, 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 the foresight to, uh, to take advantage of what we're doing. So it's a, it's a huge expenditure. I realize that um, 
a whole other elephant in the room is the stretch between Fair and Pine. I'll talk, talk about it until you turn blue, but I'll talk about that. But for this other portion, um, the plan that's been brought forth and vetted and vetted and vetted and, and talked about, you know, whether it was within the communities or within the staff or uh, you know, with there or anybody else, it's time to get this thing taken care of. Let's, let's uh, do our best to prepare ourselves for the future. And that's what this time leading up to it has allowed us to do. I think we're very fortunate that it maybe wasn't a couple of years earlier because we weren't, weren't going to be uh, as prepared as we are right now. So with that being said, um, I, I just can't tell you how excited I am to, to get, you know, with the history and how much what we've seen uh, over the last 20 years living here and, and knowing um, First seeing those piles of rocks. I mean, come on, guys. <clears throat> the first time that those rocks were put in place, everybody went, "We've got a, uh, a one miles worth of trash that we're looking at on one of the most beautiful um, scenes in, in the entire Midwest." Okay, so uh, I'm glad we're going to be gone. I'm glad that we're building it up and we're doing it uh, responsibly, and we're going to take care of the infrastructure, which is something that I feel very passionate about. We all do. Um, that's you know, that's planning for the future. I've got a good question, uh, Commissioner, on, on the longevity of the road. You know, if you go through and you, you put in a, a, a new road in, and you've got new infrastructure, I, I think you're being generous at saying you're going 30 years because if you do grinding down an overlay once or twice and, and do it the proper way because the phase of rating works for the for this city and, the, and our, and our uh, engineering <coughs> does a good job with those so long as we keep them funded. Um, you know, that's, that's what's going to, um, you know, just make this uh, that much longer of a, uh, a, a wise investment for us. So, uh, I really, I guess I don't really have any questions. It's just more of a, I understand that some people want the road between Fair and Pine. Some people say let it go. Some people um, don't look at that as a, as a major arterial access point going up to Presque Isle and they want to bring it in and around uh, Lakeview or down uh, Presque Isle, whatever they see. But, you know, that's the reason that our, our commissions ahead of us went ahead and said, we're not building on the lake, we're going to put the bike path there, we're going to preserve it for all of our citizens to use. Sure, we can still have an all access bike path and things that go through that area, I'm sure we would. But uh, personally, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, um, that can let every bit of stress go as I take a ride down um, out to the island and and take that scenery in and, and, and kind of re-center myself because uh, over the holidays I've had a lot of friends that have come up to visit and they say, you don't understand where you live and why and you know, what's what you have here and I go, yeah, every day and, and we got to keep doing that and we can't uh, we can't let that out of our, our, uh, our rearview mirror because otherwise um, uh, things just don't, uh, they, they won't add up for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse. A couple of points if I can. Tonight's been a good session to this point. I think it's been good for a couple of reasons. One of the big ones, I think, is it was an opportunity for the, the commission as well as all of our, our folks in the audience, all of our citizens, to see what good planning looks like. To see that you don't pull a plan out this year and expect to execute it next year. And it takes literally years, may take five years, may take a decade, may take longer, before you're able to pull that plan to an actual operation status and do it. And that's really what you've seen with the difficulty with Lakeshore Boulevard as we're addressing it now. When Mr. Stackowitz went through those, that was 20 years of planning of one plan and one document building on top of another and another and another and continually being updated as they move along. So when we get to the point that we are now, where this is the future, we can't kick the can any further. We've got to address the issue. You're now in a position to do so. We've never previously been able to find the money to be able to get this road fixed. And we do way back had to be fixed. Now it's the 11th minute of the 11th hour when we have to take the action on it. And we have a viable plan to do so. And that's a tremendous credit not only to past commissions, but certainly to the staff we have in the city and their ability, along with our citizens' committees, the Planning Commission and others, 
that have been able to slowly over time build this package. So now when you have to do it, you're able to do it. And I, I, I know that we will be successful in getting it done. I will also point out that it also is a wonderful opportunity when we deal with that little stretch of road that we unfortunately had to spend money on the armor to keep, in other words, that section from Pine uh, on down the fair that partially belongs to the university and the city has the easement on it for right away. <coughs> and that's what we were doing when we placed all that rock. That had to be done because that was the right now moment. If we were going to save the infrastructure that we have there, the road, the park, Lake for Arena, the damage potentially that could be done to that as it begins to approach the uh, drainage outflow, the little bridge that's there. And remember, we've got people living right in that area too, that we owe them an honest effort to try and protect the lake, or as protect it and take, take the opportunity to, to keep our infrastructure, which in this case happens to include our own citizens, safe as we can. So <coughs> we had to do that. But it is an opportunity now to sit down with Northern, sit down with the university, and say, as we look ahead, how can we better do this? And we have the luxury now, a little bit of time, I think, to do that. But we do have a grant in, to a coastal management grant, that will help fund that work out. So, as again, as a, you've been able to move this, this mark around down the highway. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a tough issue. It is a lot of money, and certainly Commissioner Lonzell, I think, is right in being concerned with that. But we also, if we're able to take the Cliff South property and put that into a tax rule, a tax positive situation, where that now becomes a brownfield, and that brownfield money can in turn be used to help pay for whatever obligations we may have towards <coughs> the Boulevard. Again, I'm being a little general here in terms of how it all may come together. That's a positive income source that we potentially can use. And we would expect staff to be able to explore that and come back to the commission with what their recommendations would be. Many things I can talk about, many different ways we can go. But Madam Mayor, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, audience, for being here and working through this issue with us. So back to the original purpose of this work session. We called the work session to kind of go through our entire lake shore in our cut. Obviously, we're both focusing a lot on the boulevard. The erosion is happening most there. But today in our tour, we went all the way from the south north back over some erosion along the bike path and went up north um, when we talked about Crest Isle. But obviously, the, the biggest issues that we're facing right now are along the Triple Boulevard. From right to Holly, we've got a plan, and um, I think we're going to hear more about the plan from Fair to Pine in a moment here from um, Jerry and Kurt. So I think with, I've got some questions that I will save until the end because they're more about that section of the road. So at this point, I think we'll turn it over to you. Um, we've got Jerry with Superior Watership Partnership and Kurt with uh, Thank you. Um, my goal in the next few slides is not to confuse you. Um, there's one thing, uh, you know, they talk to people on the street and all the concerns and everything. Uh, I try and, uh, you know, any projects, you know, challenges requires funding. And just a little background, um, I've been doing grants. I started off uh, you know, starting in 1994, a lot of the earlier small grants that we can do with uh, pollution prevention. Uh, went to a little bit larger to deal with uh, infrastructure projects, <coughs> the water plant, uh, the stations. And then 2000, with the Beach Act of 2000, uh, lo and behold, um, they came out with a, uh, it was a small grant to start doing uh, beach monitoring. And over the last, during, from 2000, 2005, you know, we got 5,000, 8,000, 10,000. But what we learned is you start doing these grants, you get recognition from the state, and then, like I think uh, Christian Kona said, you build on each grant. And the goal is to really, I call it, don't chase grants, um, really take a hard look at the uh, commission, the strategic plan, and try and find a grant opportunity that fits your strategic plan. And that's what I think we've been able to accomplish uh, you know, with the challenges of uh, the Lake Shore. <clears throat> but I'm gonna just touch on a few of the grant opportunities, where we are, um, you know, 
probably touch at first three grants um, status, and I think there's a um, Dennis is going to talk a little bit more about the, some of the design, and then we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the coastal zone grant later on. Um, one thing that's really, uh, I do want to recognize, by the way, uh, Jerry uh, Franz here from the watershed. Um, I've uh, said I'll sort of take the lead right now, and if I start to get a little bit of trouble with some more with technical and stuff like that, uh, Jerry is a little uh, step in. I got this uh, illustration, which is a good example of all of the projects that the uh, uh, city department working with through the partnership has been uh, working on throughout uh, many, many years. Uh, so there is a lot of, lot, of, lot of activity going on. Um, for the people that weren't on the tour, not only um, are we concentrated on erosion, but also some of the work that the watershed does with uh, dune grass planting, you know, coastal restoration, vegetation. Um, there's a lot of wetland work that's been going on. Um, so really this slide here sort of uh, is separated in different areas um, that uh, really that we're concentrating on. And then also a lot of the grants that we get, they are, uh, um, these are some of the smaller grants that the watershed partnership has been successful for. And these are really specific projects that, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately some of the public doesn't know that there is a lot of work going on um, throughout the, uh, throughout, you know, with the, uh, you know, helping out with the restoration of the, um, the lake shore. Okay. Right here, we're going to concentrate on a couple of grants that were actually the good one is the, through the watershed uh, group. Uh, we have been awarded a, a NIFWA um, Coastal Resilience uh, Fund grant. It, uh, the grant amount is $2.5 million, and it did require a local commitment match from the city, and the commission approved that. I believe. Uh, application went in 2017 so it did take a while to uh, to get awarded that grant but um, that was a, a great great success story and of course the good thing about this we had a project once again with the uh, with the uh, coastal zone management early planning in 2012 13 14 we didn't do that we wouldn't be uh, in uh, um, be uh, successful in getting this uh, this grant here. A lot of uh, local uh, Lakeshore Boulevard project supporters. These are the partners. When you put together an application, you know, a lot say, "Oh, just fill out an application," you know, a grant application. Well, these grant applications sometimes can go up 50 to 75 pages, and they do require a lot of uh, you know support, you know, contract spend. Um, other groups that the uh, city and the partnership has worked with, you know, really uh, getting letter of supports. And yeah, a lot, some nice phone calls and politicians have always helped out. Uh, the the NIFWA grant, it was a very competitive grant. Only 35 grants throughout the whole nation were awarded. So that's where we're really uh, kicking off the first phase of the uh, with funding for the road relocation. Okay, two other uh, um, grants that are currently in the process. One is um, the FEMA pre-disaster mitigation. The good thing about this grant, we're fixing a problem. We've got all the plans in place from, once again, the previous studies, the planning, the strategy sessions. We will take all that information, put it together to a FEMA grant uh, um, request and we're, I hate to say it, we're that close to being awarded this, uh, this uh, grant amount. And once again, this will be focusing on the area for the road relocation and then the, uh, the uh, and the restoration between the road and the, uh, the lake shore. And then uh, back in 20, uh, 2017, uh, with the, once again, with the assistance of the watershed, we were doing some research with the Army Corps, 
once again, there's a lot of preliminary information that was available from 1998. A lot of the uh, problems we're having was had to do with the construction of the break wall, and there was a Section 111 uh, program that it's, it's, a, it's a program that it's, it, they fund um, dollars for mistakes that the Army Corps made. <laughs> So what we had to do is really put together a good documents, some background information, and uh, just to say that by the work they did, it caused further uh, <coughs> action or uh, reduced uh, or increased the problem of uh, uh, the, what that we're facing right now. Uh, we did make the first step. They admitted that we do um, what we are uh, approved to take the next step, which is a $100,000 uh, feasibility study to really take a hard look at looking at uh, it further. So we're in a, that was just a, announced about two weeks ago. And uh, again, working the Army Corps has been a great partner to work with. So uh, it's really a, a very positive for that. So those are just the key ones going on right now. Um, I think at the, at the end of the slide, uh, at the presentation, I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about the coastal zone and uh, the area between uh, Fair and uh, Wright Street. This will just be really short. Part of, I mentioned this on the, um, to the commissioners on the, on the bus ride, but I think it's important to note that right now the the city commission had authorized the city manager to be in negotiations for the sale of the property. And one of the important things to note about that property is it is an existing brownfield. And it could be amended into the future. And the way that those brownfields work is that you can take the ca capture of any development on that site and pay for your public infrastructure. So all of the work in front of that site from Wright Street to Holly, that could be public infrastructure cost recovery based upon the taxes collected from that development. It can be used directly um, to pay for the costs of that infrastructure, even if it comes at a later date. As long as it's on the brownfield plan, the city can move forward as it is and pay for that even through the grant funding and then six, eight years down the road when the taxes come in for development on that site, the city can go back and reimburse itself through that tax increment financing. And it could also be used to uh, take care of any environmental remediation if that were necessary. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we go with the design modifications to match some of these funding opportunities. And we had there were some changes to the shoreline treatment, uh, which this was part of this came from the NIFWIF, uh, the funding source, which saw the addition of a, <coughs> a small beach into the restoration on the north side. However, the road design remains the same. There are some minimal cost impacts. Uh, we had to look at the impacts from the adjacent property. And, and very importantly, as been mentioned tonight, is there are coastal engineering considerations that need to be looked at. For example, these coastal engineering considerations, lake levels. Um, here we have, uh, this is through Gleesa and uh, the Great Lakes, Gleesa is Great Lakes Integrated uh, Science Assessment. Um, it's, it's a very technical organization that, that you can use for references and also we have projections from the Army Corps of Engineers. These are the two um, prominent sources that you would go to. So what this engineering firm will do is they will look at the projected lake levels and so on and so forth, along with their own hydrology studies to come up with that revetment for the shoreline. But this is kind of a pretty picture of what I had originally shown in my first, first part of this presentation during my um, the road we look, it's the same road alignment, same number of parking areas, same access to the waterfront, same bike path, same dune and swale concepts. 
but we had to add, if possible, a little public area there to the north, sand of Congo Beach, and some underwater erosion protection that, and you probably can't see it on here, but right up here is a little underwater kind of reef to make up for that little gap in the arm. Again, this is all subject to that professional coastal engineer taking a look at it. These cost estimates um, come out here, like I said, about $12.2 million. That's with contingency work in, and when you get up to that amount, contingency seems to be pretty much. Um, this doesn't include any potential cost of some site remediation. As we've recently had um, the presentation from the Cliffs Dow team and the representative from Eagle, formerly MDEQ here, um, we don't look that, that it doesn't look like there's going to have to be something where we're going to have to dig out and remediate on the site. However, as part of the brownfield, anybody involved on that site would be able to capture some of that money to take care of what they need to do on the site. These are cost estimates for phase one. So this construction is coming this summer. The road relocation is $2.8 million. One million of that is taking rocks and piling up so we can protect the shoreline while we do it. Phase two, this is the, the shoreline rock armor, multi-use pathway, the parking lots, dune, beach, underwater, all of that is 8.3 million. This project, phase one, has been budgeted. It was already approved by the commission in the capital outlay budget. Our engineering department has prepared the bids and they are ready for distribution. We anticipate construction starting in 2020. Typical construction season for us is made October. Future funding opportunities. I guess Mike, you just want me to roll with it? All right. I'll roll with it. Lakeshore Boulevard, Fair Avenue, to Pine Street. Okay, so we have, and the commission has approved the Coastal Zone Management Grant application that was approved at their, I believe, their last city commission meeting. This grant application will allow the city to spend some grant money on construction to fix up some problems that we've had at the southern end of our current project area, which would be Pine Street and Wright Street kind of location, and also provide for funding to do planning. It will allow us to work on some of the interim maintenance plans, the stormwater outlet, which we'll hit later. We have a potential for a partnership with NMU, and as early or discuss the planning process for future options. And we had listed three on here, which is the do nothing option, close that section of Lakeshore Boulevard permanently, reroute it along Fair to Pine Street, or modify and strengthen the shoreline funding dependent. As we work through the Coastal Zone Management Planning Grant, if we're successful in achieving that, or if we're not, this, this really right here is something that's going to need to be some policy direction from the city commission as we move forward with that. Um, this will give you an idea of our grant application that we had submitted. You can see the area highlighted in a kind of a pine green. That's a restoration area and then we have planning all the way down with that. I don't want to get into the details of this too much because it, <coughs> we want the public process to play out in the planning, not be driven by me standing here. So to follow later on, we will have meetings on this. This is the Lakeview storm drain culvert, and we know that we've had issues with that. These plans were actually drawn up some time ago during a, another project that we had. However, we didn't have funding to accomplish it at the time. But as I've been informed by Kurt, the money has been approved in the upcoming budget and it will be taken care of this year. So we'll be addressing that 
behind Lakeview Arena, some of the improvements necessary to, to take care of our stormwater retention area. I almost called it a swamp. <coughs> this is the 41 South. This is uh, uh, the transportation alternatives. This is the shoreline stabilization to protect uh, 41 and 28 out by the DNR actually in front of our wastewater treatment facility. This is uh, primarily most of the money is being matched by DNR. There's some superior water spread and city Marquette match in there. For the public's benefit, when you see this match on here, a lot of times it's not cash. It's our staff time. It's time that we devote to it. If we have to have an engineer attend a meeting or draw, make a drawing for them, that's match. Okay, so it's not that even though we call it match, it's usually in-kind services that we do that. And that's going to take care of this area along uh, 41 and 28, which is the southern section. So then we get into Shires Park. That's been talked about. This is part of the unit, Army Corps of Engineers Section 111 study. If the Army Corps of Engineers does not come through for us on this one, the city has actually set aside $300,000 for grant matches and or maintenance on this. That was done as part of, I want to say when we budgeted for the uh, Lakeshore Boulevard relocation. College Avenue. Uh, College Avenue. College Avenue. Yeah, the College Avenue. The money from College Avenue deferring on that was taken and it was set aside for grant matches or maintenance on this. Um, and of course, Shires Park, the outcome of what we do here is going to be, be dependent on that commission decision regarding those options for Lakeshore Boulevard to the north. And what I mean by that is it, you know, it kind of changes right now. It's kind of a pass through. Does it become a destination park or, or so on and so forth? Presque Isle Park, we have some challenges out there that we need to look at. One of the things that's planned is to relocate some of the pathways to a safer location. And then we'll also be dealing with Sunset Point. Andrew, do you have anything to add to that? Very basic. Uh, we have some undercutting at Sunset Point. Uh, public Works crews have done a great job uh, pushing back some of the dollars to uh, make sure that there's no cars parking on that whole undercutting. Um, some of the spots that we're concerned with are on the west side of the island. Um, the original riprap is holding up pretty well. Um, we haven't seen a lot of damage since October 2017, um, but we're concerned about further erosion that could impede on the road, which we can't move the road over any further due to the hill terrain there. And there's also some uh, additional erosion by the gazebo. Thank you very much, sir. Public safety. Um, Ian? Yeah. You sat through the whole presentation. I'll let you speak for the last you know, three minutes. Otherwise, I'll hear it tomorrow. Well, wait, on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll just give you a quick update on uh, the current situation with uh, waterfront safety infrastructure. Uh, there was some damage in the most current storm. Uh, the biggest one being the damage to the gate and fence at the north break wall uh, at the island. Um, we originally uh, worked with Marquette Fence to put that in. They are in process with an estimate. Uh, they did give us a very general range of ten to fifteen thousand dollars, depending on how much they can uh, repair and what they're going to have to replace, or whether it's going to be the total replacement. And then they are looking at a design that will be a little bit more robust uh, than what we purchased the last time. Um, moving south, uh, the lifeguard stands uh, pretty much made it through the storm. We did have some damage. Those are already being repaired, and they're all going to be moved uh, back away from the encroaching water line. Uh, and then the last minor thing, uh, uh, the last minor piece of infrastructure is at uh, Picnic Rocks. We did lose the flagpole that was right by the lake. It's now in the lake, um, and so that will have to be addressed. Uh, those, uh, the repairs, moving the lifeguard stands and the uh, re-erecting and cementing in that uh, flagpole should hopefully cost less than 5000 And that's what we're at. Every, everything else uh, made it through so far fairly well. Thank you. That wraps it up. 
it's only like an hour and ten minutes. It's got to be like a record for as many <laughs> slides as we've had. We could cover a lot. Tonight. You know, I, just in closing, thanks for bearing with us on the, and thanks for your interest in coming out to learn about this because I, I hope you can walk away from this and and have a feeling that city staff is kind of on top of this and we've actually been doing some planning over the years and we haven't, you know, just respectfully just turned our back on the lake and, you know, been remiss in our duties. Um, we understand that the lakeshore is very important to the people and, and we do try to stay on top of that as best we can using the plans and, and policy directions that we have for the city commission. So with that, Thank you very much. That concludes our presentation. We are, of course, available for any questions, comments, concerns. Thank you. We really appreciate the presentation, Dennis, for these staffers who have come up and, and given us some great information tonight. Um, I'm going to take the liberty and uh, make a couple comments and questions right off the bat here. So um, even a couple months ago when we were looking at some of the stabilization we needed to have happen, this kind of work session is what I was looking for. So thank you. Nice job. Um, we did get some more information on Fair to Pine. Wondering about the timeline on that, if we could get a little bit more of an estimate. I know we've got some grants. Jerry, can you help me with the CZM timeline? Kurt, October 1st, 2020. October 1st, 2020. However, that doesn't mean we can't. I mean, that's the official award date, okay. is October 1st of 2020. To be honest with you, check the room, make sure nobody really calls us out on this, but we usually know, like, May. We'll know if it's a potential right. award, and there's a good chance that draft they may move up because of all the erosion, uh, uh, what's going on right now. The other thing with that CZM grant, it's a seven, $700,000 available statewide. So we're in some very, very tough competition, and the grant is for 200000 with a $2,000 match. But once again, it's, it's a, I think my cut's in a good position because we're utilizing this CZM grant of the work we did with the other um, uh, CZM grant. Yeah. That's why we got the phone call encouraging us to uh, submit. Anytime you get a phone call asking you to submit a project, pretty good. And this would be the fifth or sixth CZM funded project in Marquette if we were awarded that. So, then what would the timeline look like for this public process for future options? You know, I think we really need to sit down and take a look at that depending on. on uh, what I would like to do is, is as we move into the strategic planning process, I need to talk to my boss, and I think one of the recommendations that you're going to hear from him and I is, is as we move into the strategic planning process, this needs to be a strategic <coughs> planning item where we can lay out an outline and funding to properly answer the question you're asking me right now. I, I, I'm not really sure I, anything I would say would be above and beyond embellishment until we actually look at it in that strategic planning process. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, if the funding for all of these grants doesn't come through, do we have a plan B? Or is it just we're crossing our fingers and hoping that we get all this grant funding? Well, we, it, for, which, <coughs> for which section are you talking about? Any because and all. You know, I can tell you on Shiras Park, we have a plan B. We have $300,000 that we've set aside already um, to look at that. Um, for uh, Fair Avenue to Wright Street, I'd say we pretty much exercise plan B at this point to stabilize it in the meantime um, until the community figures out what it wants to do with it. And as you work through that planning process, depending on what the outcome you know, there may be no funding involved. The community say, well, just let it go. Be that. So I, I don't know that we're at the point in planning yet to have a plan B, although we've kind of exercised it by saying, let's just interim do it. As far as Wright Street to Holly, that funding's in place. Um, with the exception of FEMA and knock on wood, it seems like we're going to be pretty good there. So uh, I, don't, I don't really think we have to worry about a plan B for that section of it. And, sorry. Oh, the Army Corps funding? That 100000 is funded. 
And it's just a matter of them actually reading what we send them, not thinking that it's the wrong harbor. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dennis. I appreciate you answering yep. those questions. I'll go through the, the commission now, Mayor Pro Hill. So I think one of the, um, and I, I agree with I agree with Mayor Smith that um, this was the sort of information that we've been looking for. I know I've been looking for for a year, and um, but what gets really confusing to those of us who aren't doing it every day is things are talked about in terms of the grant name and not what the outcome of the project's going to be. And I think that you would be, it would really help if you said, well, we're going to work on the project to restore the. Post. I just, I just, you know, and it's not, um, it's, so, Holly to Wright Street is restoring the coast and moving the road. And calling it what the outcome is instead of what the funding source is would go a long way to help people understand what's actually going to happen. Because I, I um, because you guys have done, you know, a lot of work, but that, that right there, just putting the outcome in front and not the money name in front or the funder in front would really help. So that's my, it just really hit me as we were running through these things. What is going to be the outcome? What are we paying for here? And in particular, what's our match going to pay for? So, um, uh, and, and again, okay, I understand it sounds like we're going to get the FEMA money, and the FEMA money is, I don't remember, and we've gone over this about several times, but the Army Corps money is, there's $100,000 that all of a sudden we've received. But then there's also millions that we might get later, but I, I don't. The, the Army yeah. Corps received $100,000 that was appropriated by Congress, and they're using that money in-house to complete the study, so it's not actually coming to the city of Marquette or anyone. Um, it, once they determine whether there's federal interest in the project, and some <coughs> project which would probably be in the next few months, um, they will request additional funding under that authority from, from Congress for the next fiscal year. They're paying themselves. Okay. Essentially. Yeah. But Essentially, once, they're paying themselves. Okay, and that's that's fine. It's their. I mean, it's it's money that they use to do think to pay for things where they caused a problem. So that makes sense. Um, but all of the work to achieve that final modified design doesn't happen unless we get that money. That's what I mean by plan. I think that's what the mayor means too by plan B. That's, what's it gonna look like in a oh, no, couple of year interim? No, no I, let, let me, let me, let me try to clarify something. that. I think I'm gonna, I understand what you're asking for and I think I'm gonna try and clarify that right now. Okay, so we have, we have a grant to move the road and we have a grant to fix the shoreline. None of those are dependent on the Army Corps of Engineers funding. The Army Corps of Engineers funding is a separate thing. And the grant to do the shoreline and the grant to move the road, those are funded by, okay, the National Fish and Wildlife Service and the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency. Those two right there. The, U, the Army Corps of Engineers study is, are moving the road or fixing the shoreline is not dependent on that study or any of their funding. As bad as this is going to sound, they're really paying themselves to do a study so they can come back and say, yeah, your shoreline erosion is our fault. Right. That's, that's I, mean, I can't. No, but I, 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 can't I, I still don't think you quite understand. I, um, the, um, but there was talk of like needing $12 million, and FEMA and NIFWF don't add up to $12 million, do they? Or am I, not, am I missing something? No. No, they... Yeah. That was, they do not add up to $12 million, but what we have, what we're going to do with some of that, I wish Gary was here tonight to explain it, because that, maybe that's something you can take a note to have Gary explain how he planned on doing that, because he's the guy with the money and the moving the grants and the, and the bonds and, okay. and, and so, bond issues around and, and, and again, like that. Going with the outcome, it sounds like there's going to be a period of time where we're going to be in this in-between stage. 
where we're not going to have that final design. You're going to have move the road, but what happens along the lake shore is going to be a pile of rocks, is going to be sand that may or may not stay there. Okay. That's what I'm seeking out. I, I, can, I can help with that also. Because that's a very important question, and it's very good knowledge for the community. So thank you for asking it. Um, part of moving the road is building another revetment while we're moving the road. Because we don't, we're going to have to protect the workers there. We're going to have to protect the infrastructure where it's done. We just found out, and we just talked about this on New Year's Eve or the day before, where um, in speaking with uh, the folks at Baird, they understand the fast track necessity of this, and they, and they feel that they have a lot of the data and they would be able to gather the data quickly enough, so we may be able to possibly parallel those projects. Now, when I speak of paralleling them, we're going to have a temporary wall. We're going to move the road. <clears throat> By the time we get the road done, we may be able to directly parallel right into doing the revetment work and then come back the following spring and put the pretty stuff on it, you know, the swale and stuff like that. But as far as protecting the infrastructure, we may run into a parallel situation. I asked because there was a point in time where we weren't sure how we were going to pay for the bike path. I remember that presentation where the bike path was, it, it was a tied to the money from the Army Corps and it wasn't there yet. Well, according to this plan, that's part of phase two. Yes. Let, me, let me just add a little bit here. Um, the bike path is you are correct, it's, I mean, there's a lot of ifs or ways in this plan. <coughs> we can't deny that. The original estimate of 12 million came from our engineer, city engineer. Uh, working with SWP in the relationship that we have, we are hoping that we can lessen that cost. Um, the two grants that we expect to receive are around $8 million. We are going to do as much as we can with that $8 million. Uh, hopefully the timing works out that when we get that, and, it's, and there's a lot of time involved here, there's no denying that, that the uh, Army Corps of Engineer grant will be fruitful. If not, the plan B is going to have to be, uh, it may be, depending on how much work we have left to do, to come back to the commission and future CIP projects or future CIP plan, uh, uh, reallocate some of those CIP funds to this, complete this project. I mean, that's the worst case scenario, I think, for a plan B. Uh, and what it comes down to is, you know, where does the commission place the priorities as far as capital improvements? Uh, up to this point, it's been uh, fixing this road, which we, are, we support 100%. Uh, it's always been a priority, but as Dennis mentioned in the beginning, the funding is already, or maybe uh, Commissioner Stonehouse mentioned that, that you know, the funding has always been the issue. But, I mean, there are ways uh, we can uh, come up with the money if we need it. If we're not fruitful, for example, in the 111 grant. Forgive me if I wasn't paying up, but you did mention that our engineer's estimate was really high. Yes, I did. We think it's high. Uh, I hope it's high. Yeah, it's, 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 and I guess and the reason I'm asking, I want to set the public expectation. One of the things, I, as someone who's worked on public landscaping projects, you see the pictures with the trees and they're 50 years old and they're big leafy canopies and instead what gets put in is a tree that's five years old, it's this little stick and that kind of thing. So, and I, I just, you guys are working really hard, but there is going to be a period of time where it's not done. And I think that's fine to say that. And I think it actually would help to say there's going to be a couple of years, it sounds like, of, okay, the road doesn't exist at all because we're moving it. The beachfront doesn't exist at all because we're figuring it out. And, and I, 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 so um, I, I, I think um, I just, that's, that's I, I find that actually comforting <laughs> to be honest about how long this is going to take and how it is contingent on a number of different things, including, to go back to the thing that I keep talking about, what the water wants to do, which again, I, 
I don't see here. <laughs> what are we armoring against? How do we know the sand is going to stay? Um, I, we heard on the bus tour that, well, it's how, most of the water at uh, Picnic Rocks, from Picnic Rocks north, <laughs> swirls up towards Dead River. But on the other side of Picnic Rocks, it's swirling down towards the lighthouse. That, that seems to me to be the most fundamental thing. <laughs> but we, where's the images? Where's the information about that? That's what we're working on. So please, can we have that information? That it, at some level, I understand, I'm not asking for the perfection of a site that you're going to build off of this. But how do we know the sand is going to stay? We sure didn't know that the sand was going to leave behind Lake the Arena the way that it did. Oh boy. And that's, I'm going to, we're going to be assigning, allocating millions of dollars. I don't want to misspend your money because we didn't pay attention to what the water was doing. That's all, I'm not, you guys are doing really good work. And I'm not saying you're doing bad work. I do have a, we have a philosophical disagreement about the value of a road. That's fine. And you're working really hard. But for goodness sakes, please, can we understand what the water is doing? Thank you. Can I say yeah. Go ahead, Jerry. I, I, I think that we will have something for the commission very soon. We're in the process right now of working on a contract agreement with Marriott Engineering and their partners. And so they're going to get started right away, um, probably within the next couple of weeks. We're in the process of transferring files over to them now. And so I think the commission can look forward to some presentations around you know, the study components as well as the direction they're going with design coming up in the near future, the next few months, I would say. Thank you, that's very helpful. Commissioner Lawrence. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so I don't think Superior Watershed Partnerships gets enough credit for this. You don't have to work with us, and you're doing such great work. Um, I, I like a lot of these plans. I think I share the concerns about funding. I have a couple questions about, um, Slide 52 says Lakeshore Boulevard from Fair Avenue to Pine Street. We talked about a coastal zone management grant application um, that we approved a couple weeks ago. Um, from my understanding, that stopped at Pine Street. So is that what part of the coastal zone management grant application goes from Pine Street to Fair Street? Oh, those, the, what, the way that works Okay, it's part of that is construction, part of it is planning. There's always pl planning money left over there, okay? It's grantsmanship is what it is, okay? You present them this great little construction project that, look, we're gonna make a difference here on Pine Street. And oh, by the way, to the south of this, we really wanna tie this into this coastal wetland that's like this remnant that's owned by NMU that's been there since the beginning of time. Do you think maybe we could kind of slide this south and do some planning for this? And they're like, yeah, how much more money do you want? Okay. That's really, it's really grantsmanship is what it is. I can't <coughs> say it any other okay, way. Okay, so the, the maps that I'm seeing that stop at Pine Street, that's just for reference of what we're applying for. Correct. Yep. But it can tie into a more comprehensive plan for absolutely the enemy will <coughs> And even larger than that as well, because Marquette County is a partner on that grant also, okay. and they're looking up, up they're looking at updating um, portions of their master plan and with some new coastal planning recommendations. Okay. And so they're kind of tied into this a little bit as well, because they'll be looking at the whole 80 miles of shoreline in the county, and then the city and you know others we can focus more on those particular areas. Um, of concern along the way short. Okay, so it's a little bit fluid that helps me a little bit. Um, yeah, no, um, so when we talk about the, the project being funded and budgeted, right now we're talking about phase one, correct? That's correct, the road relocation. Okay, so phase two, what we're talking, eight million dollars, um, and, and I don't mean to be flippant or dramatic when I call it the $12 million one mile road, I want to be very transparent with the public that that's your money, that's what we're spending it on. We can call it the $12 million one mile shoreline, but it is a great plan. Um, 
I'm worried that it will be stuck in phase one. What is the threat of that? Is that possible? I think anything's possible. I mean, we build the road and then we don't. I mean, we have a grant obligation to, uh, to do what we said we were going to do. We've taken the money and we provided match for it already. Is it reliant on grants? No. Is it reliant on brownfield development at Cliff's house? No, that's icing on the cake, though, if you're able to achieve that. Um, my last question, well, I, I do want to say that I'm not completely sold on Cliff's I think there's a lot of uh, environmental concerns that I, I still personally have. I know that was the charge from uh, commissions in the past, but I, I I, um, I don't want to rely on having that brownfield tax um, capture to fund these projects. And I, I don't want to be pigeonholed into voting for development on Cliffs Dow to fund a project that I like. So I just want to be clear about that. The roundabout, um, is it necessary? From my understanding, roundabouts cost between $500 and $1 million. Actually, I can speak to that. That roundabout? We, when we speak to long-term maintenance, that roundabout is by far the cheapest option, and that's why we've been putting them in in the city. Um, the the cost, the initial cost of a roundabout, compared to a traditional intersection, particularly one that would be signalized, um, it pays for itself in about five years. Um, that was just a concern that I've heard from the public about the roundabout. If you could save money there. Um, I, uh, I really appreciate the work. I, it's, it's a lot of work. I don't envy it. I, I can't even imagine. Uh, I mean, grant writing itself is, is just an exhaustive process. And um, I am still concerned about the enemy property. And I do hope that we have a plan soon to either evaluate cost effectiveness or what NMU can contribute but, um, between Fair Street and, and Pine. But uh, with that, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bonson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, yeah, I first just want to thank uh, our friends from SWP and, and Baird. I think I'm really looking forward to learning uh, more about our lakeshore and also the hydrology. Um, I think you know, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hill's point is well taken that we do need to understand where the water is going and I'm looking forward, as has been mentioned in the past, we are going to be uh, here in this spring about uh, precisely where that water is going and what the hydrology looks like. And I'm sure that will impact our plans. Um, I also just wanted to note uh, Shiras Park. We talked about that briefly today. And uh, I actually first got involved with city government, uh, well, that was a while ago, but I got re-engaged in city government by joining the Parks and Rec Advisory Board back in 2017, right after the uh, October 2017 storm essentially destroyed Shires Park. Um, and so that's something that's very close to my heart, and uh, I guess in 2017, as an idealistic new city board member, I was like, we got to go fix this park. And, you know, we're still here two years later, and um, I understand that the uh, potentially some of the funding from, depending on the results of the U.S. Army Corps study that's ongoing, uh, we could potentially get some funding to redesign and rebuild that park uh, as part of that. But the timeline, the tentative timeline for the U.S. Army Corps funding that we may receive um, is like 2022 or 2023. That's a quite a long time. We have three hundred thousand dollars set aside for matching funding for grants and maintenance of that park um, and the parking lot. And I suppose my concern is that uh, that park, in the meantime, for the next few years, is going to remain very vulnerable and exposed to extreme weather events, and that we may end up sort of uh, spending a lot of that three hundred thousand dollars in the intervening time period. And then if we don't get funding for the reconstruction of Shires Park from the U.S. Army Corps, what is our uh, 
where is the matching funding for a grant going to come from to rebuild the park? So I, I don't know if we have a contingency plan for that or if that's kind of on the back burner right now. Well, I think any, I'll answer that. I think any, any uh, I mean, obviously we're all hoping for the best case scenario <coughs> in all of these. Um, the worst case scenario in, in any one of our plans would fall back on our general fund budget. Um, what we have done and what we've begun to do, at least when it comes to Lakeshore Boulevard, is we've re realigned or readjusted our capital improvement plan. Uh, basically, we've been spending between five and six million dollars a year on capital improvements. Um, we, uh, we have a plan out five or six years uh, in the future for each, uh, each year of capital improvement. <clears throat> I would, uh, I guess I would suggest, and I think the only recourse we have is that if uh, a worst case scenario presents itself where all of a sudden we need three, four, five million dollars, we may have to forego one year of capital improvement. In other words, postpone the street projects that we have in the city uh, for that year year and then spend that money on uh, taking care of our shoreline. Again, it all it all falls down to you know where's the priority with the commission. And as I mentioned on the bus, we are following the priority that uh, the shoreline is a priority. Um, the, the road along the shoreline is a priority. And until we're told differently, we, we will make recommendations in that direction. Um, the important example the commission doesn't want to deal with the park or the shoreline and wants to deal, just spend money on other uh, capital improvement projects, and that's the direction we'll go. So it's, it's a matter of conscience, desire uh, of the commission. No, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I, I would just also add that uh, part of the reason I was asking about the lifespan of the road and the multi use path that will be built along this one mile stretch of Lakeshore Boulevard from Wright Street to Holly Street. Um, and, and also the total cost of those projects. And you know, I think that we, all, and also I was really, really happy in this presentation tonight to see a lot of details of how much money we actually have already spent over the last decade on the maintenance and repairs to the shoreline and to Lakeshore Boulevard because of where it's currently located. Um, and I, I suppose what I'm really getting at there is I think that we need to consider how long is Lakeshore Boulevard, the new stretch of Lakeshore Boulevard, and the new multi-use path going to survive before it has to be replaced at some considerable public expense? And it's going to happen someday, um, regardless. You know, we can't change that. So given that, we need to have a good estimate of how long Lakeshore Boulevard, the new stretch of Lakeshore Boulevard, and the new multi-use path will survive, how long the infrastructure will survive, before it has to be completely replaced. Because I think that this project, to be justified from a fiscal standpoint, needs to pay for itself. In essence, save the city enough money on maintenance and repairs that within the lifetime of this new infrastructure, it ends up net saving city taxpayers money. So, you know, for for example, if we look at the about $3.7 million in matching funds, not even considering any of the Army Corps uh, grant matching the funding, but just the matching funding, we pretty much know we're going to have to provide. It's about $3.7 million. Um, you know, how long is it going to take us uh, before that money that we invest directly, that cash money that we invest, as matching funds ends up paying for itself in terms of safe maintenance costs and safe repair costs. <coughs> That's something I think is very interesting to me. I think we need to know the answer to that question uh, if we're going to make a fiscally responsible decision. So that's something I hope to learn more about moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schlegel. Madam Mayor, um, not a heck of a lot more to, to add other than uh, very excited to hear about these potential uh, monies for between um, uh, pine and pear. So, uh, that would be uh, that would be fabulous. You kind of have a rabbit in your head every once in a while to show a little surprise for us at the meeting. I really appreciate that. Um, that would be fabulous. And I, I just 
want to go back on that we're not all just kind of racing to a uh, conclusion on that section of the road. Uh, and I want to and I want to throw a lot of I guess a lot of thanks uh, out there for the uh, the quick action that was taken with Rick Rap um, in order to allow us the time that we need, hopefully, uh, to, to make sure that we're going to do this section as right as we are with the other sections. Um, only through it today. I was very happy to see after the last couple of storms that the building holds, seems to be holding its own. Um, and the areas that uh, I think he was, Dennis was, or uh, Scott would be very generous by saying 20 feet away from the road was the, was the water. It seemed closer than that to me when we went by the areas that were completely finished as of right now. Uh, so I'm looking forward to them finishing that up so that we can uh, fight back uh, the rest of the storms this season. But that was a, a very smart move, I think, on the city's behalf. I think we we're very fortunate to get it done in the, in the time, or mostly completed at least right now, in the time that we did. Um, I wanted to also just bring up, you mentioned the $8 million, uh, Mr. City Manager, that uh, was the initial investment there. That's with all of our matching stuff included, correct? Correct. Okay. And that was one, Commissioner uh, Hill wasn't sure if that was clear enough when he said it or not earlier that the eight million did include that was the grants plus the match. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Stiles. Thank you. Uh, again, let me just let everybody know and kind of reinforce that we just had a tour de force of public planning and how grant proposals are put together, the amount of time that's necessary to put them together, the amount of time that's necessary to do the planning to get a result at the end. Uh, I mean, I think I'm going to make a guess here and say that if we put an application in today for a Corps of Engineers grant, it could be three years before we see the money. And that's starting cold. But having done the preparation, it becomes much easier to do. And that's really, again, a great accolade, not only, of course, for our planning staff of the city, but our good friends to the ship partnership, too. Uh, so we let us every step of the way. Um, a few. Uh, Maybe a month or so ago, maybe a little bit less, there was a letter signed by a number of state senators uh, to the governor that were asking for her aid for emergency monies for high water, I think, uh, mediation related. Is that anything that we can play against, or is that uh, simply just a guess? I, I'm not a whole lot of breath on that one. I don't think anything's coming. Well, certainly whatever we can play, we should play. And uh, Commissioner Hill was, uh, I think, absolutely correct when she said it's a big project. It will be a year, two years, maybe, maybe even three, before you have the final project completed. It is a $12 million project. That is going to take a lot of curve moving, a lot of time, a lot of effort before it is finally done. But it's going to be one of those things that we have to do, and I think all of us will be quite happy to see it done. Uh, a question for the city manager, or perhaps for Mr. Stackowitz, or whoever is feels best with it, but uh, if we were to receive one of the federal grants after we had done the work, can that money be used to reimburse the city? In some cases, yes. Um, when they consider the start date on the grant, for example, the FEMA grant, we applied in November of 2018, so they consider that the start date for the grant. So any money or staff time or Anything that the city staff or anyone else has put into it that far, you know, we can backdate it and count some okay. of the previous time we spent. Mm -hmm. We have it. We have it back in the detailed cost in case that happens. But I mean, we are theoretically within the running to have some of that money that reimburses the city for what previously got. Correct. Okay. So it's 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 not a, certainly a total loss. I do uh, I, I do appreciate Commissioner uh, Bonzel's thoughts on net savings over time. I think that makes a lot of sense to try and grab those as tightly as we can so we really do understand uh, the issue involved in it. I think over time it certainly will pay for itself, but that's an intuitive uh, estimate. That's not one that we can quantify, and I think we should be uh, as close as we can to on quantifying that. And I, too, look forward to the opportunity to see Northern step up with the city and see how we can take care of planning that little stretch of road. It's a real opportunity to and gets good work done. Uh, Madam Mayor, nothing further. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the, the main message tonight is um, more to come, right? We've got some more work ahead of us. Appreciate everything that's been done to this point, decades of work actually. Um, 
what you've got some other items in the fire and looking forward to some future updates this year and in coming years. Um, at this point, do we have anything else from city staff? <coughs> If we have any uh, public comment, public comment may not exceed three minutes per person. Please state your name in this quadrant. We'll make a public comment. And again, I will be handing my phone here as this is an informal work session. Go ahead and approach the podium. Good evening. Margaret Brown, 404 East Magnetic Street. I want to start by complimenting the staff and the work that went into the presenting of an incredible amount of complicated information. And I really hope this information will be available on the city website so I don't have to do an FOIA because I'm still waiting on the FOIA for two months ago. So if it could be posted, I would very much appreciate it. There's a tremendous amount of good work, well done, and can be done to build on as we go forward. Um, there are a couple of things that are completely missing from the discussion. I believe that uh, this project is complicated enough to warrant a standing committee, subcommittee of the commission addressing just this project with uh, work sessions scheduled at regular intervals. Uh, I suggest quarterly because the storm situation is the way it is now and we're going to have another storm situation in three months. Uh, I go that road every day and every day it's different. I would recommend work sessions on a quarterly basis. I would also recommend, as you go forward with the work sessions, that a representative of Northern Michigan University be here, uh, since a big portion of their land is involved, and that a lot of discussions about grants are being done that they shouldn't receive secondhand. Uh, third, I would recommend that you involve the United States Coast Guard in your discussions of your coastal activities. Uh, recently, I learned that the Coast Guard uh, Station and Chiefs changes between every two to four years. And the institutional memory of the Coast Guard Station is based on what their files say. But you're planning a multi-year project involving a huge stretch of coastline for which they are legally and morally responsible for knowing what's happening, when and where it is happening. So I don't think you'd be amiss in inviting a representative from Northern and a representative from the Coast Guard to join you for these sessions. They can always decline, but they should be invited. And my last comment has to do with the preparation of the commissioners for this meeting. I sat in the back room and I used Toastmasters principles to evaluate the commission. And with a, comp a complicated subject matter, which this is, with a multi-year commitment of money and resources, the questions I heard in the back row should have been addressed before the meeting to the speakers in writing, so each speaker would have a chance to address each commissioner's question in the meeting to have, so the people could have the advantage of hearing the question and hearing a reasoned answer. There were several times during the meeting when I just thought, that's a good question, but the person didn't have a chance to prepare for it because they didn't know about it in advance. I would encourage each commissioner to do their prep time, and when you have your list of questions, to share it with the presenter. Up. Thank you very much. situations and I know where she's coming from but you aren't going to have everything in advance and for what you have or where you've all come from some of your experienced members we have two brand new members and you're doing a wonderful job keep it up and as far as the city and the preparations have been done for this presentation it's been very informative to me because I didn't know all the ramifications and I didn't know that I knew we've been on and off on this subject ever since I've been here for the last 30 years. But I didn't know how in depth that the city was working on this problem from past councils, from all the city workers who have worked lots of hours on this. And uh, my appraisal of them has gone up immensely. 
they work very hard for the dollars we pay them. And you all work very hard for no dollars we pay you. Thank you very much. Anyone else for public comment? Nancy Sevenoff, 1314, Picnic Rocks Drive. Um, very informative. Thank you. Thank you to the Superior Watershed Partnership, to the work that's done by the planners, the planning group for our city, um, and for the work that you've done. A couple of random thoughts. One is to underscore Commissioner Bonzel's comment that we're really talking about protecting the shoreline in addition to protecting the road, and I think those two are intertwined. And so we have to really keep that in mind as we look at why are we doing this? Why are we spending, uh, we the collective, all of this time considering this issue? Secondly, I want to come back to a comment made by uh, Commissioner Hill that it would be helpful for the public to understand the project and then how that project is going to be funded versus looking at the grant and then what the grant is going to fund. So I say that an educator, somebody who's written multiple grants, somebody who tries to convey information in the uh, clearest way possible, and for those that are in the public, myself included, it would be helpful to know this is the project, these are the grants that are going to address that particular project, even if the grant spills over into one section or another. And I think that could be simply done, it wouldn't take a considerable amount of time to do that, but I think that everyone could be well served to understand what, what grants are going to fund, what projects, and what are the implications if those grants aren't received? What are the matches? And I was a bit taken aback when I heard that we are already at Plan B for that section between Fair Avenue and Pine Street by putting the rock armor in there. And if that doesn't work, what's the next step? Let it go, somebody said. Well, if we let it go, we're talking about stormwater drain that doesn't work. We're talking about uh, the effect that it's going to have on Lakeview Arena, but also the effect that it's going to have on some of us who happen to be residents in the area and purchase there not knowing that we were going to live in a floodplain or have beachfront property. So that's one minor suggestion that I would like to at least offer. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Jim Green, uh, 1008 Northwest. I just have a simple question. Um, have you factored in what impact climate change will have uh, on, this, on these projects? We know the lake is high now. It's not always been high. Do you think what we're seeing now is simply the normal ebb and flow of uh, lake rising and falling? Or is there reason to be concerned that this rise is not going to recede? Thank you, Mr. Green. Just a note that we can't respond to questions during public comment. Anyone else for public comment? Don Snowden from 320 Cedar Street in Marquette. And thank you for all the work that you've done. Uh, I have a, a similar concern about, uh, is does anybody know what the, the lake levels, are? Is, is there something that's keeping the lake levels high or is there some reason why it, uh, is, is it gonna go higher or, or what? Does anybody know any of that? No. Are they not letting water down to go down the St. Mary's River, River because it's already high in the Huron and Michigan and so on down the road? But uh, that's just one thought. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'd like to see the, the, the shoreline maintained. Uh, and I, I, when um, Mr. S when the s when they first started talking about the, the moving the, the road inland, I had been to Canada, and uh, there's this is up near north of Lake Louise, and they've got a big, um, it's a tourist site, but I've seen these 
in many other locations. Uh, and I, I brought pictures in to Mr. Stackowitz and showed him a picture of these things that are called the tards. And when you look at you know, the Van Hardis house, or you know, you know where that is, that right there, Shiros Point, Picnic Rocks, it's the house that's got the, the boulders that are the 10, 15 ton boulders instead of the 100 you know, several hundred pound rocks that have been put in in an emergency situation. And uh, a way to get around having to come out with these gigantic boulders is to have uh, uh, baskets made out of heavy duty, uh, I don't know what it would be, but it would be galvanized steel or something. Uh, and then you fill those with rocks to a capacity where it's something that's like 12 feet by eight feet by six feet high, and now you've got something that weighs a, num a number of tons, and it's, it's much harder to move. And you could have these things interlocked on the shoreline to create a stable shoreline. Uh, I don't know if I've gone out of time yet. <laughs> but then the other thing that I heard here was the area that you were uh, talking about where there was going to be a little beach and they had a revetment that they were going to put in the water. Uh, what about, uh, it just nobody's allowed to go out to picnic rocks anymore, what about building some under, underwater reef that's offshore that is, I mean, uh, would protect the shoreline that's further in? Thank you, Mr. Snow, I think three minutes is up. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks for the Anyone else? Hi, my name is Chris Emmerberg. I live at 900 North Lake Trip Boulevard. And again, you know, hats off to everybody and all the work that's been done and, you know, let's save the lake and the shoreline. Um, I actually kind of piggybacked on Don's comments. When I went to a meeting about this plan at the uh, it seemed like it was last spring uh, at the uh, Citizens Forum. There was a talk about this, um, these underwater uh, things that are going to be in place. I think the man that was describing it, um, you mentioned putting three things under the water. But I didn't really hear anything about the underwater erosion protection plan. And I, I too, um, you know, John Q. Public would just like to understand um, you know, what the plan is for that. And I really encourage looking into some of the things that Don just shared, because, you know, if they're doing it in Canada, maybe we could do it here. But, you know, we, we started a long time ago recognizing the need to address the Lakeshore Boulevard from Holly Street to, you know, north. But I mean, in a quick period of time now, we've seen a, you know, major need to address it further south from Fair to Pine. And if you look at the, you know, just around the corner from that point, Shiras Park point, uh, there's major erosion going on there. Uh, and also some black stuff. I'd still like to learn about what the black stuff is, just make sure it's not carcinogen. Um, but, um, and I, I know my friend having somebody look into that, and I appreciate that. Um, because um, there's an inch thick black stuff that hasn't, I've been there for, 30 years and actually been going to the um, beach. It used to be a picnic grass all my life. Uh, and you know, that beach is no longer there. So when does, you know, we do keep losing more ground. There. So I would really like to uh, appreciate, I want to express appreciation um, and also encourage this comprehensive strategic planning. Um, and I would like to understand the underwater erosion protection plan. You know. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Anyone else? Seeing none, public comment is now closed. Just wanted to clean up a couple of items. Um, as mentioned by Ms. Brown to invite NMU. We did have NMU present today, and they were also on a tour. Um, the other comments were taken to be taken into consideration. And then um, we, we did have some folks that asked about climate change and life levels that is part of the discussion. At this point, I don't have a whole lot of extra information, but we'll have more on that to come as part of the study. Um, anything else from city staff or city manager at this point? Okay. Seeing none, we are adjourned.
adjourned at 8.04 p.m. <coughs>